Oh my God, he's exactly what we need for depressed Applebee's manager number three. <laughs> I live in Los Angeles. It's, um, it's, well, I'm doing entertainment, so it's fun. But then on the other hand, you start getting body image issues. Um, I recently went in for an audition for a commercial. The description of the role was skinny guy, not in shape. I was driving over, I was just thinking, man, I hope I don't knock this out of the park. <laughs> That'd be so depressing. I walk in there, the director's like, oh my God, this is our guy. <laughs> yeah, Richard, I just love the way the skin is just hanging from your bones. <laughs> Margaret, get in here, you have to see this. Oh my God, he's exactly what we need for depressed Applebee's manager number three. <laughs> Where did you find him? Uh, I'm single, I, um, why are you laughing at that? I'm single, I, was, I read this article online, it said uh, nine reasons you're still single. I was like, if it was one or two, I could do something. My problem is that I just don't know when women are into me. I was walking down the street, this woman, she comes up to me and she goes, oh my God, you have nice eyes. Um, do you know where the movie theater is? I was like, I don't know, um, I could look it up for you. She goes, I, I, I mean, I could do that. And then this is how good I am at flirting. I said, so what do you want to do here? <laughs> I just walked away. I was like, ugh, people are so dumb. <laughs> 10 minutes later, I was like, I'm dumb. <laughs> so now I developed a new system because I can't have that happen to me anymore. From now on, if a woman asks me a question, I assume that she wants me. <laughs> I have to. I was at Starbucks, this girl, oh, this girl comes up to me. She was like, hey, do you know where the bathroom is? I told her straight up, I know you want me. You know you want me, Dolly. <laughs> do, you ever, uh, do you ever text somebody that you're dating and then the longer they take to respond, the more you turn into Smeagol from Lord of the Rings? <laughs> That's my whole life. <laughs> Just like, oh, it's been 30 minutes. She could be busy. She hates us. <laughs> she hates us. Why? <laughs> so stupid, 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 stupid. <laughs> She doesn't seize our text messages. <laughs> no. She sees. <laughs> she sees and she doesn't respond. Mm -hmm. She loves us. <laughs> Master loves us. Uh, I just had a birthday. I just turned 35. So, uh, oh yeah, thank you. That's a nice reaction you have because I told this girl I'm 35 and she goes, don't worry. <laughs> what? She goes, don't worry. You don't seem 35. I said, this is not a medical condition. It's just my age. My hair is thinning though. Um, you know, losing your hair it's like being in a relationship with someone who's leaving very slowly. <laughs> the way I feel is like, if you wanna leave, why don't you just leave? 
don't just grow more distant every day. <laughs> I've been having conversations with my hair. <laughs> I live alone. <laughs> I'm just sitting on the couch watching TV. What's going on, man? Where are you going? <laughs> my hair is just like, well, you know, we had a good run. Uh, now I feel like we're just growing apart. <laughs> I'm gonna shave it off. Really? <laughs> yeah. That way I can be like, I broke up with you. Now that I know I'm gonna be bald, I feel this like very deep connection with bald people. I love them. I don't know what you do, sir, but I support it. What do you do? What's your job? Yeah, you. <laughs> the guy with no hair. <laughs> the only guy with no hair in that section. <laughs> Make signs. I bet they're the best signs on the planet. <laughs> I just love bald people. Bef Before I knew I was gonna be bald, I hated Pitbull. <laughs> Thought he was the worst rapper ever. <laughs> now the thinner my hair gets, the catchier his music sounds. <laughs> He comes on, I just start turning it up. You know you want me, I know you want. I'm just like, Dolly! <laughs> My God, he's so deep. <laughs> I, I know I'm 35 because I recently got into an argument with Comcast customer service. <laughs> I called Comcast, I was like, I need to reset my password. The guy goes, okay, first you have to answer your security question. What's your favorite movie? I said, Mad Max, Fury Road, cool graphics, cool acting, cool fight scenes. He goes, that's not it. He goes, do you want to guess again? I said, you want me to guess my favorite movie? It's Mad Max. <laughs> Fury Road. <laughs> he goes, sir, that's not what it says here. I got mad. I was like, dude, I made this account five years ago. I'm not allowed to evolve as a person. <laughs> well, what do you think I did for five years? You think every time my friend asked me, hey dude, do you wanna watch a movie? I was like, listen, I made a promise to Comcast. <laughs> it turns out my favorite movie is The Lion King. <laughs> That's not secure at all. Any seven-year-old can just hack my Comcast. <laughs> What's your favorite movie? I like The Lion King. <laughs> You're in. <laughs> I'm just getting into all these like arguments now that I'm a, now that I'm in my mid thirties. Things just are just annoying me, like especially the way people order at restaurants, because people these days think they can ask for any substitution that they want. Like, um, could I get the arugula salad with asparagus? But, <laughs> instead of arugula, could I get a burrito? People think the menu is a first draft. <laughs> I walk by this, uh, this sushi restaurant. 
Outside it said, Tokyo sushi, just like mom used to make. <laughs> Come on, you guys remember, right? You come home after school. <laughs> your mom, you know, she's got your favorite thing ready. You know, plate of cookies, some milk, and then a salmon sashimi platter. <laughs> That's the worst marketing ever. You can't use any slogan for your company. What if I was like, an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. Lens crafters. <laughs> Live every day like it might be your last. Kaiser Permanente. Uh, well, this is, you guys are great. This is a fun crowd. I do a lot of stand up and I meet a lot of people. Sometimes I meet weird people. Like a couple, a couple days. <laughs> you seem like a weirdo. <laughs> Last week I got off stage and I shook this guy's hand. His hand was dripping wet. I said, what's going on here? He goes, oh, I just came out of the bathroom. Then he goes, don't worry, it's just water. I said, what are the other options? You think I'm in my head right now going, oh my God. This guy just pissed all over his hands. Now he's meeting people. <laughs> what a confident man. I wish I had that much confidence. You know, like, hi, I'm Fernando. <laughs> Don't worry. It's just this. I'm not a confident Italian man named Fernando, unfortunately. I'm a uh, Indian man named Richard. My dad didn't want teachers to have trouble with my name. I appreciate that, but if I have a son, his name is gonna be like Krishna Subramaniam Hanuman Vijayaswamy. Like, during roll call, I want my son's teacher to feel racist. <laughs> she shows up to school, she's all happy. She's like, good morning, kids. Let's do roll. Steven, mm-hmm. Sarah, mm-hmm. I'm just looking through the window, you know? I'm like, yeah. She's never seen this many syllables. You know, um, I don't think school prepared me for the real world. Like, I remember the D.A.R.E. program. I am not getting offered nearly as many drugs as I said I would. Based on that class, I thought like you walk out the front door and you have to start dodging needles. <laughs> I got to high school, I realized, oh, you have to be cool to be offered drugs.
I was in zero danger. <laughs> the D.A.R.E. program for me should have just been, Richard, you just keep doing what you do. <laughs> Nobody is gonna approach you <laughs> with or without drugs. Don't worry, it's still a comedy show, guys. <laughs> I was always a nerd. Like, I used to play so many video, uh, video games as a kid. But the games I would play as a kid, I loved those because in the game, if you did something right, the narrator in the game would say nice things to you and make you feel good about yourself. You remember, like, like g -g -g great job! <laughs> Terrific work! <laughs> Your fa 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 father loves you! <laughs> wow, never got this far. <laughs> I'm still like fairly nerdy, fairly awkward. Like, I have weird interactions with people regularly. Uh, I was at a bar last month. I was waiting for the bathroom. The guy who used the bathroom came out and we locked eyes. And I was like, oh no, like, what face do I make? <laughs> so I just started smiling. And then that was so awkward. And I was like, all right, well, now I have to say something to break the tension. But then I did that wrong also, because I was just like, H how was it? <sighs> Still have PTSD from that. I do some physical humor. <laughs> I move around a little bit. <laughs> you know, the only reason we have uh, social anxiety in uh, America is because there's so few people. You don't meet new people that much. I went to India, there's so many people that you cannot have social anxiety. <laughs> India is so crowded that if you put your hand on your hip like this, people start looking at this space right here. <laughs> They're like, are you subletting? <laughs> it's so crowded in India that if you hold the door open for somebody, that's your new life. <laughs> Sorry, I just need to breathe. <laughs> Women are so interesting uh, when they break up with a guy because they have to sugarcoat it because they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, you know? So it always comes out like, listen, like, I think you're awesome, but let's be friends. But I think you're awesome. <laughs> I think a doctor should give you bad news the same way. <laughs> Like, listen, like, I think you're healthy. <laughs> to me, you're in perfect condition. But this paper says you have tapeworms. <laughs> I don't think you have tapeworms. <laughs> But this test, which is 100% accurate, says you do. It's not you. It's the tapeworms. <laughs> <laughs> my, 
my friend told me to try to meet women at the grocery store. He said, just go to the nearest grocery store and talk to women. I said, okay, but for me, that's 7-Eleven. <laughs> I don't think I can find love at 7-Eleven. <laughs> just like, hi, you look stunning next to those 242 taquitos. <laughs> and then I don't think I can flirt while that door noise is in the background. You know, the ding. <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> How can you flirt while that's going on? She's like, hi, I just wanted to come over here and ding, ding. So I just thought maybe me and you could just ding, ding. I ding, 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 ding. have a great life. I just don't know anything about dating because my parents didn't teach me anything. My dad is the worst person at dating in the world. My dad married my mom, and don't feel sad, but my mom turned out to be a paranoid schizophrenic. And I asked my dad, I was like, how did you not know when you married her? And he goes, oh, I just thought she was weird. <laughs> I just stopped the conversation right there. I was like, who's crazier? My mom, who's a schizophrenic, or my dad, who's like, ooh, this girl seems quirky. <laughs> this is the only woman my dad has ever been with, so he just thinks all women are like this. So when he gave me the talk, it was like, listen, men and women are very different, okay? Men are from Mars, women hear voices. <laughs> My mom's a paranoid schizophrenic, but I'm, my question is, what's a regular schizophrenic? <laughs> like, if you're hearing voices, I think you're allowed to be a little bit suspicious. <laughs> Who's this doctor out there diagnosing people like, okay, so you're definitely schizophrenic, but one more question. Does it bother you? Yeah, so they didn't teach me anything about dating. <laughs> I hung out with this one girl. We hung out like four times. And on the fourth time, she goes, listen, I think you waited too long to make a move. She goes, I think you missed the window. I was like, can you reopen the window? <laughs> she goes, no, it doesn't work like that. I told her, I was like, um, I don't think you know how windows work. <laughs> Dude, after that conversation, I had to drive her home. <laughs> what? Like, if you're gonna end something with somebody, you gotta do it at a place where you can both part ways. You know? Don't be like, yeah, I don't think we should see each other anymore. And I'm like, okay but there's still like a week left on this cruise. <laughs> so anyway, that car ride home was so awkward. Man, we didn't talk for a long time. And then at one point she goes, oh, it's very stuffy in this car. I was like, yeah, sorry. I wish I could open a window. Thank you guys so much. I've been Richard Sarvate. Have a wonderful night. Uh, you guys are so sweet. Take care. Have a great night.